Hello, I'm FGX Toy Cat, and Space Vader 196 asks, how big do I think the different cave biomes will be? And fortunately, I don't have to answer this question with my thoughts, but instead we can get a really good feel from what we've seen, both in terms of Lady Agnes's most recent tweet, talking about the lush caves prototype they've been doing. You can see the kind of size of this is looking kind of like what you would expect right now from Minecraft, but if you combine that with the prototypes that we saw from the Henrik Nieberg demo, you can start to get a feel that caves are going to have very different sizes. I mean, they've even directly confirmed that, that different cave biomes have different size types enabled, and that is backed up by the fact that in the first 1.17 preview we saw at Minecon Live, we saw a very, very tiny lush caves, one of the smaller caves that could exist in Minecraft, and now this prototype shows a kind of medium-sized cave, I'd call it. And then we can combine that knowledge with the brand new snapshot, which added a new biome to Minecraft, the Dripstone Cave Biome, and they explicitly said that the Dripstone Caves couldn't be put into the normal cave gen right now, because it was intended for caves much bigger. So Dripstone caves very clearly need to have a very large cave type, whereas lush caves seem to need a more small or medium cave type. And uh, in case you're curious as to like, you know, well, how will, how far will they extend? How many caves in a row will you find? Will it just be one cave as one type, the next cave as the next type? Well, it sounds like, based on the fact that they fit into the biome code, we have even more confirmation than the snapshots we've seen, because Lady Agnes uh, tweeted out saying, haha, oops, I was trying out a world gen feature for lush caves, but managed to have it generating absolutely everywhere. Hashtag bloopers. And you can see how this entire desert biome, even going as far back as that azalea tree in the far distance, um, is covered with the lush caves. And that implies to me, if not a perfect overlap between the size of a biome in the, uh, you know, the above world and a biome of a cave, it implies that they'll have a similar kind of extent to them. And they're also going to be using that same biome code because clearly here, the lush caves overwrote with the, uh, you know, the desert code and they kind of combined in this very weird way to see, which honestly, I would love to see this happen every now and then, right? Like have it be a rare one in a thousand feature have caves right at the surface everywhere. But this also tells us that you're not just going to have one tiny or even medium sized lush cave and that'll be it. I think you'll find a cluster of them nearby each other, which is important info that we haven't seen yet because again, brand new caves and the actual generation and the biomes mixing, we haven't seen in snapshots or betas yet, which is quite interesting to think about. But next up, let's move into the second question. By the way, this is Q&A Saturday, the weekly series where I answer your questions. That's why we're answering questions today. Hope that makes sense because Askewi asks, should this cave update introduce cave maps that let you map out the underground. And this is a really interesting idea that I'm surprised they haven't jumped on and announced already, especially given archaeology is a thing, especially, uh, you know, given all these features where they're trying to make the caves feel more alive. I think having a cave map makes a lot of sense, if not to have just like, you know, like a cave map that can lead you to a particular treasure, like a, you know, I, I think that'd be a fun little, uh, you know, game. In the same way they made the oceans more interesting with buried treasure, have some form of cave treasure or like something that can lead you to a rare structure would be a lot of fun. But even if you ignore that and you just think, Okay, you know how we have maps for the overworld, like how I built the entire UK on one? Uh, why, why don't we have maps for the caves? Right now you can only map the surface, let's map the underground. And there's two ways to do this. Uh, here's one of the first ways, which is just allow people to draw their own maps. And honestly, I'm not a big fan of this. This is just going to allow people to draw, uh, you know, questionable things in Minecraft. So it probably isn't going to be the most loved thing anyway. Also, it just looks terrible. And even in this perfect example, trying to show it off. I think the second idea is to have uh, maps which can show the world from a lower level. So this map is clearly done from somewhere very close to the bedrock layer, and that way you can actually see where all the caves are in your world, and you can start to get a feel for how to navigate them, etc, etc. And that could be a really fun idea, not just for helping you explore the world, but also you can make much more fun, customizable maps, and also it would fix the biggest problem we have with the nether, which is nether maps don't work, because the nether has a layer of bedrock, followed by uh, you know layers of netherrack on the ceiling, and uh, therefore all nether maps just look ugly and the same, unless you're on Java and you can get up there. Basically what I'm trying to say is having uh, you know some form of map that works works in different places than they do right now would be a lot of fun. But do you know what else would be fun? Answering the third question today from JT Vikings, who says, what are your thoughts about an end update? Would it be something like the never update or something else? And I think the community as a whole, you know, not just like me, not just my subscribers, but I think the Minecraft community as a whole is very much coalescing around the idea that 1.18 will be the next update. And I know it's ridiculous to talk about the next update when, you know, 1.17, the cave update is still six plus months away, but it is the most fear thing for a lot of reasons that maybe we can dive into later, but I think we should start by showing you this trailer and just kind of mentioning that I don't think an end update would ever be called that for a lot of reasons, but the biggest one is that as you can see from this trailer,
that name is kind of already taken. Also, you know what? Isn't it a bit of nostalgia to be able to go back and see uh, when they used to use the battle game music to make trailers for Minecraft? Like, it's crazy how far Minecraft Bedrock has come from just like, oh, we'll just take music from elsewhere and like kind of work with it into like where they are today. Some would argue they've gone worse in certain ways, but um, yeah, it's really interesting to see that this was only a few years ago they've released the end update. And given that 1.9 was also kind of a secondary end update, even though on Java it was called the combat update, um, it's worth mentioning that like calling it an explicitly end update, I don't know if that's necessarily the perfect way to do it. I think calling it the late game content update or something like that, because you know how many Minecraft players have been to the end? So many fewer than you would ever expect. 6.35% have done it in legitimate survival to earn this achievement. Uh, you, you know, you can tell that 70-something uh, percent of Minecraft players have played survival at all, and that means more than 90% of players never even go into their end portal, and off those, only about two-thirds end up beating the dragon without hopping into creative or something, and that is a crazy low number. So even though it seems weird to say, because, you know, we defeat the ender dragon more than a few times every single month on this channel, and some, some days, multiple times a day, um, even though it seems like, oh yeah, that's just the normal thing to do, the truth is most players have never been to the end. The end as a whole is a late game dimension, um, you know, outside of creative players where you might go there for fun. And as a result, when they do anything to the end, they're making content for about 10% of players. And therefore, not only is the idea of making an end update kind of uh, tricky, not only is pointing people towards that going to be controversial because it's the finish of Minecraft, but also they need to balance that out with more early game content. In the same way with the Never update, we got Ruin Portals to help people find their way into the Never. Um, I don't know how they do a similar thing for the end, just, but just bear in mind though, that if they're doing an end update, it almost certainly wouldn't be entirely focused on the end. And that's because every single Minecraft update tries to add things for all sorts of players. There are new blocks if you're just playing around in creative and you want to build a nicer looking castle than before. There's always a new passive mob that does next to nothing because you know what? Some players just like to see cute things and also merch sales are important. But like, uh, you know, they have something in every single update for every breed of player and uh, an end only update would only be providing uh, you know content for late game players. And that's before you start to think about late, late game content. Like why is the end uh, not giving you enough reasons to go back after you've killed the ender dragon 20 times? Like that, that sort of stuff uh, seems like the important question, but also kind of isn't. So next up here, let's move into France Abanilla, who says, uh, do you think we can have tools, weapons, and armor made out of amethyst. Every time a new gemstone gets added in Minecraft, we think maybe those gemstones can be made into tools, weapons, and armor. I think we might have uh, amethyst equipment because it made me think about diamond equipment, the first set of equipment made out of gemstones. What do you think about this? So um, Minecraft has explicitly said multiple times before, like, yeah, we don't really, you know, look at making new armor and then work out the justification later. They make it if they have a good justification. And the simple answer about uh, gemstone armor is like, what value would it provide? If we had amethyst armor uh, that went in between iron and diamond, how many people really want that outside of just like, oh, I guess it would look pretty. They are generally very functional about adding new tools, new armor types, new stuff like that. And therefore, it's not a 0% possibility. We just have nothing pointing towards it. And even though it makes really fun thumbnails to be like, gemstone tools? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna resist doing that for now. But you know what I'm not gonna resist doing? Answering Naughty Cat's question, who is a strider, and I love your profile picture, Naughty Cat. But they, they say, Q, are you moving to the US when the pandemic is over? So by the US, they mean the United States of America, which is a country I spent three months of 2020 in. And I said, like, I was kind of like debating internally a lot about whether I should move there permanently or whether to settle up in the UK. You know, the big question of where will I base my life is something a lot of people have been uh, questioning for a while. So to just give the kind of grand answer here rather than uh, baiting it too much more, I genuinely think I prefer the UK on a like having my life set up here basis, but I really like the United States as a country. I, I definitely intend to visit probably every year or something like that, but I'm pretty sure I like the UK. I'm going to learn to drive and I'm going to like go like on a big old road tour of America or something like that and see if maybe uh, that'll change some things. But uh, o overall, like I I'm pretty sure the UK is where I'm at. I, I Again, I, I found an area I like. I found a uh, you know great connection to like multiple airports in a way I just can't find anywhere else in the world. And way more importantly, there's this huge uh, kind of like burden if like, if I want to live in America even temporarily, the rest of my life I am then burdened by filing 
a tax return every year to America. And if we ignore the fact that like a foreign government would be wanting to take money from me while I'm not in their country, uh, I, I think the, the bigger issue is just like having to file a huge, you know how American tax returns are? They're not fun documents. They're not like, ooh, I'll do the word search and maybe I'll file my tax returns later. It's like, oh no, this, this, this is this is not okay. I, d I don't like the idea of having a once a year obligation that I can be uh, theoretically arrested for not doing. So I think the logical choice is to like base myself on the UK, but then like visit frequently. Um, but I guess, I guess we'll see how that develops when I go there next of the actual ability to drive. Cause you know, America is such a different country if you can and can't drive for, for better or for worse. It's, it's for worse by the way. Anyway, with that said, let's move into the next question which comes in from Antaros who says, by the year 2030, do you think they will have created a new dimension in Minecraft or do they have enough updates for the other dimensions that will be satisfied? Okay, so 10 years from now, will we have an official new dimension in the game? Uh, again, I, I, have to, I come back to this comment so frequently, but it's super important. And uh, funnily enough, I found another recollection of Jeb saying it from eight years ago. So he said this again, uh, you know, a year and a half ago at the PC Gamer Expo, but even as recently as eight years ago, he said he didn't plan to add a new dimension because it's performance heavy on servers and the current dimensions need more attention before we start adding new ones. And again, we got a Never update? Sure. I would argue the Never is now a fleshed out enough place that you can explore and have fun with it. Um, five biomes seems a little short for the Never, but like, uh, you know, uh, overall it is fleshed out, but the end needs a lot more work. And the earliest we could have a new update that includes an end thing would be 2022, unless they're adding end caves as part of the cave update, which we can all hope for. But you know, 2022 is the earliest we're getting a cave update. So the earliest new dimension update after that would be 2023. Do I think it's gonna happen? Realistically, no. I think there is a beautiful simplicity to Minecraft having three dimensions that I think they're going to start resting on. I think they'd much prefer having three good dimensions to having seven questionable dimensions. Uh, again, how often do you go into the end of Minecraft? I'd love to do a poll about that, actually. I don't think most people go there very often for very many reasons, and I think the end needs so much more content. I think the Never, honestly, still does need more content before it's a fully fleshed out dimension. And uh, although the overworld is, uh, you know, mostly there, I think having three great dimensions with real valid reasons to make you want to switch between them is so much more important than what we have right now in New Dimensions, but that's just my take on things. I, I think uh, in the meantime, having the, the uh, infinite snapshot of all the dimensions is fun enough. Having mods that allow different dimensions is a fun thing you can do, but I think before they make it a base part of the game, they need to make the dimensions better. I, I, I've been agreeing with that more and more since then. So next up, let's move into Awesome Enzo's question, who says, why doesn't the RTX shop in the marketplace for me? By the way, I'm on Xbox. By the way, here's a cool thing YouTube does. You can see that little red logo next to his name. Um, the, the length you've been subscribed to someone on YouTube shows to that creator if you have your subscriptions public. So if your subscriptions on your channel are public and you've been subscribed for a while, you can make the claim that I've been subscribed for 12 years to Cat, and then that can actually be backed up. So if you want to if you want to have some like proof behind your thing. I'm just saying it's an option you have. Anyway, so thank you Awesome Enzo for being subscribed so long. And also, uh, I'm very sorry for uh, like the tragedy that is Minecraft RTX's announcement. They were clearly using it to sell Nvidia cards and then they mixed it up to be like, we're gonna start selling Xbox Series Xs with this. They showed off one of the coolest demos of showing RTX working on there. And now they just don't have a timeline for releasing it on Xbox. And it's like, oh, I feel like we got tripped. I feel like there was a duping that happened there. So, um, and also the second part of this is how do you find it in the marketplace. I've had a lot of people ask me this kind of separately to the Xbox question. And although you can get uh, RTX packs in the marketplace, any pack can choose to enable it or not. And right now there is no marketplace pack that has vanilla. Uh, I recommend searching like vanilla RTX. There's a few various ones you can find out there. I use Kelly's RTX, but the, there's lots of choices you have if you want vanilla Minecraft, but with RTX enabled. Uh, unless you're on Xbox, in which case you have no choices because <laughs> you trusted you trusted them when they said that a thing would be on a new console. Ah, this is, this is Minecraft and Xbox. They're owned by the same company, but you better believe they basically have entirely different goals. The Xbox Series X has less render distance than a phone. My phone does. It has re less render distance than my phone from 2018 does, and it is a brand new console that is, uh, uh, you know, let's not, let's not go into, into that right now. Let's dive into entirely different questions, like it's KMC MC21 part Two, what username is that? Sir, what is wrong with you that you, who has part two in their username? Anyway, so they say, Q, what is your opinion on the lack of late game content apart from Neverite? Yeah, we're talking about late game again. You better believe you can't stop me now. So I think Neverite was a great addition to the late game. I think it just adds that little extra incentive to go mining for something, then you upgrade your armor. It's nice. I think that was a cool little singular feature in the Never update. I think the Never update as a whole encourages a lot of late game stuff because the Never is terrifying in the early and the mid game. 
game. And later on, like, once you wear some gold and stuff, it's it's pretty fine to go to. So, um, what do I think about the lack of late game content? I wouldn't say there's a serious lack. I'd say they haven't been adding to the late game content for a while. Uh, Beacons and The Wither and Neverite and maybe the new Never... Uh, you know, like uh, features like respawn anchors and stuff. Arguably, those are the only real late game content we've gotten too recently. Um, but again, you then have to realize that like, oh, even though you don't consider it late game, when they added the end islands, that was explicitly for people, the 4% of players who have beaten the ender dragon. And it's like, okay, yeah, that, that makes some sense actually. Um, uh, you know, when you think about the blue ice boat stuff, that's explicitly for people who can go mining with a silk touch pickaxe for long enough to mine packed ice and then pack that packed ice into blue ice. Or after they added the ice, spoke by him to go and find it. I think they're always making a good balance between early game players and late game players. And obviously as someone who's been playing Minecraft for eight years in the same world, there's lots of features I just look at and go, oh yeah, that exists. Like, oh, so excited about goats so I can entirely ignore them when they come out. Um, you know, they, 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 this feels like there's a lot of wasteful features. Same with uh, powdered snow and leather boots. Like, I, I don't think that's going to be usable in a uh, long-term survival world. But I feel like Minecraft's getting better at late game content, not worse. The 1.17 update, just based on what we've seen already, um, has the warden, which is described as something you shouldn't ever intend to beat. They showed them fighting it with full Neverite armor and getting destroyed, which is amazing. That is what, I, in, in my opinion, is late game. That is uh, a, a piece of content that no matter how prepared you are, you're still going to have to struggle with. Um, and, uh, you know, like looking around the new caves as a whole, there's a lot more adventure coming to Minecraft at the same time as late game. And I think as far as the official Minecraft updates, it's never been better if you've been playing for years like I have. And if presumably you have too, Mr. It's KMC21 Part 2, what is your name? But before we criticize his name anymore, we have to talk about the final comment today, which is coming in from Sanjay Rajago Palan, who says, when will the new updates in Java Edition for 1.17 carry over to Bedrock? So you've probably seen a lot of talk about Java Edition uh, snapshots and all the new things coming in them. And you might be wondering, when do they come to Bedrock? Because on Bedrock, we got a new update that improved goats and there is powdered snow and oh yeah, that's... That's pretty much the extent of it. So most of Bedrock's work has been getting that RTX stuff finished. It's been getting all of the other 0.200 update stuff finished. Uh, now I imagine there's a lot of features that they were, you know, prototyping, developing at the same time as Java, which will come to a later Bedrock beta. In fact, I'd go as far as to say we won't just get a lot of Java edition things like the Sculpt Sensor. I think we'll be seeing brand new uh, 1.17 Caves and Cliffs features in a future Bedrock beta. When will that Bedrock beta come out? I genuinely don't know. Next week, the week after, January, but I would suspect Expect, especially given this little winking tweet from uh, David Cornerhard MC, uh, that it could be coming pretty darn soon. But that's just what I think. And you know, actually, before we uh, leave today's Kune Saturday, I want to ask a big question for all of you because I have this uh, internal debate all the time. Like, of course, I want late game content, but what do you think is more important in Minecraft? Do you think things that you can enjoy and explore within the first uh, 30 minutes to an hour of a world, or do you think it's the stuff that takes 100 hours in a world, uh, you know, to, to get to really start enjoying and exploring and evaluating? Do you think early game content is more important than late game content? Or do you think that almost everything in Minecraft should be mid game? Do you think the new tech trees they're adding, the new different ways to get to stuff, do you think that's more important than stuff at the beginning and the end? Or do you think it's all about the beginning, all about the end? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to get a feel for what that, because you know, my viewers are obviously going to be different than the average Minecraft players. I'd love to get a feel for what my community feels like, because to me, uh, I, I love late game, I, but I really, really love the new mid game paths because they make it a lot of fun and, and it, they, they add new interesting options to Minecraft that encourage creativity. But that's my opinion. And you know what else is my opinion? That you should like this video and let me know you liked it. And that also, there's only two weeks left to buy a long boy. It's actually, I think, uh, 13 days or something. Do you want to get yourself a long boy? Of course you do. You go to makeshift.com slash collection slash whatever. It's linked down below. And you can get 20% off a long boy. They're super adorable. And I really do recommend you get one while stocks last. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I'll be streaming later today if you want to come hang out. Goodbye.